All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nahal McGarabi. I am going to be the moderator for today's press conference, where we're going to be presenting a few updates on the ongoing incident. We have a few speakers today, and in the interest of time and to allow for questions at the end, I'm going to read through the names of all of the speakers, but have a copy of the speaker list uh, for spelling and title purposes. So if you do not have that, please see me afterwards, and I'll be sure to get that for you. We're going to begin with brief statements by the participants, and then we're going to open up the floor to questions. Uh, per usual, let's stick to please just one question and one follow-up question to allow for everyone to get their questions answered. And if we have time, we'll be able to go back and get the rest of the questions. So we'll have about 10 minutes after the speakers to kind of go through Q and answer session. So the speakers today are Captain Jennifer Williams, Federal On-Scene Coordinator for the United States Coast Guard, Jared Blumenfeld, Regional Administrator for the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, Captain Mark Crossland, from the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, Kathleen Jennings, Wildlife Branch Director for the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, Rick Mc McMichael, Senior Director of Operations, Plains All-American Pipeline, and Patrick Hodgins, Senior Director of Safety and Security for Plains All-American Pipeline. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Captain Jennifer Williams, the Federal On-Scene Coordinator for the Refugio Beach Oil Spill Response. The Unified Command would like to take a moment to explain the breakdown of the affected impacted areas. To date, our response has surveyed 24.6 miles of shoreline. Of the 24.6 miles of shoreline surveyed, 4.6 of those miles were determined to be heavily impacted. Six miles were determined to be moderately impacted. 8.9 miles were determined to be lightly impacted. 0.8 miles were very lightly impacted and 3.3 miles have not been impacted at all. Our shoreline cleanup assessment teams, SCAT teams, continue to be dispatched for cleanup operations every day. We thank the public for their patience while cleanup crews work along the beaches and ask for people to stay clear of the impacted areas so that crews can work unimpeded. In addition to removing the oil that washes ashore, we take samples of the recovered oil, which are sent to be analyzed and fingerprinted to determine if it was a result of the refugio oil spill or if it's the result of another source like natural seep. The interoperability of each element of the Unified Command is essential. Helicopters are dispatched every day to survey the shoreline so that we may continue to identify if new areas have been impacted and to direct the deployment of cleanup teams to the right locations. In addition to the progress that cleanup crews have made, the Unified Command would like to thank the outstanding volunteers from the community who have stepped forward to receive the required training and to help us in the cleanup efforts. These training classes will continue and members of the public interested in helping should call 1-800-228-4544. This afternoon, the Environmental Protection Agency Region, Region 9 Administrator, Mr. Jared Blumenfeld, has visited the incident command post and staging areas for the ongoing response. He has also joined me today to announce that we are jointly issuing an administrative order to Plains All-American Pipeline, the responsible party, to ensure as we progress through the response efforts, they are meeting all of our demands. I will allow Mr. Blumenfeld to talk more about the details of the administrative order, but I want to ensure you that we are united in our effort, efforts and maintain our course to completion. While the administrative order defines Plains All-American Pipeline as a responsible party, federal, state, and local agencies will continue to work alongside the responsible party and maintain our priority of safety to the public, safety of our responders, and the environment. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Williams. Uh, my name is Jair Blumenfeld. I'm the Regional Administrator for the United States Environmental Protection Agency. Thank you for coming today. Um, I didn't want to come today. None of us did. Uh, the spill, when you see it, really has a, a big impact. And that big impact has brought people together. Um, I'm really struck by how this is a unified command, um, whether it's the Coast Guard, um, all the way to the Board of Supervisors, uh, the 
Chamber of Commerce in the city of Goleta, the tribe uh, I met with, the Chumash clans. Um, this has really brought together um, the sheriff's office. Um, the list goes on and on, but it's an important list because in many of these cleanups, this hasn't happened as effectively. And really what, what I saw on the ground today was people working together in an extremely coordinated fashion. Um, I want to also thank um, the state uh, fish and wildlife uh, we have Chuck Bonham here, the director, um, and that really signifies something that I see in this state, which is Governor Brown has made a strong commitment with his emergency order, a strong commitment to get boots on the ground. Um, this is a very serious situation, and he has put the resources forward to get the job done. The Governor's Office of Emergency Services, um, and we're joined today by the state's uh, regional water control board. Um, we're lucky enough to have the chair of that board, Jean-Pierre Wolf, with us. Uh, and that's not even touching the surface of all the federal agencies um, that are working day in, day out. Um, when I was down at the site today, there was, there was about five, 600 people out working um, from the Coast Guard, uh, NOAA, Fish and Wildlife, Department of Interior, FIMSA, um, and you'll hear more from them in the, the days ahead, um, and as we just heard, the volunteers. The volunteers really um, speak to me, um, and I want to thank each and every one that has been trained. Um, it often isn't easy, um, but it sets you um, on a path where what you're doing, you're doing safely and effectively. Um, and often I know I've wanted a volunteer in the Costco Busan. I work for the city and county of San Francisco. You want to get out there, you want to do what's right, you want to clean it up, but the training really helps make sure that you do it safely and you do it well. Um, so continue with those trainings. The California Conservation Corps has been out there. Um, they are trained. Um, the CERT teams have been out there. They're trained, so thank you to all of them. I want to talk specifically um, under the Clean Water Act. Um, just if you think back on the Clean Water Act, it was written the year after the 1969 Santa Barbara oil spill. Um, that's why it was created. Uh, we, our agency was created in that same year, uh, 1970, the Federal Environmental Protection Agency was created. So today uh, we and the Coast Guard are exercising under Section 311C an order to make sure that Plains All-American um, moves forward um, in the way that makes sense. And that is really a combined effort. They, in the next 14 days, will come up with a plan of the continued cleanup. We will review that plan. And once it's finalized, um, there are penalties um, for non-compliance. Um, so we want to make sure the work is done, the work is done effectively, and that the public has a clear understanding of what that plan looks like. So there may not be oil on the beach like there was in the first few days, but there's still a problem. Uh, that problem needs to be cleaned up. The oil all needs to be removed. We need to make sure the water and air monitoring is done effectively. Um, so this order lays that out um, in detail, and you'll have a copy of that order. But the main goal is to come up with a plan um, that is legally enforceable um, by EPA or the Coast Guard. Um, we make sure that we vigorously do enforce that. We will be doing it with the Regional Water Quality Control Board is their standards that will be used as the cleanup standards, so they play a valuable role in helping us do that. Today's important pivot point, the team is all together, we're moving in the same direction, and that direction is the continued cleanup based on standards um, that are scientifically derived and followed up um, by monitoring um, in the months ahead. So thank you um, for covering the story, thanks to all the people here that work day in, day out. As I said at the beginning, none of us want to be here. We'd all rather that spill hadn't happened. Um, it's unbelievable that it happened in the same place um, as the 1969. But in some ways, it's, it's galvanized this team, it's galvanized the community to make sure that we put safety first um, and look at how we can learn into the future. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Mark Crossland. I'm a captain with the Department of Fish and Wildlife's Law Enforcement Division. And on behalf of the state of California, I'd also like to recognize the incredible work that the Unified Command has done collectively 
um, col collabor collaboration, excuse me, has been an effective part of this overall response, and we're extremely grateful for our partners in this effort. Uh, this cleanup is ongoing, and we are moving forward with positive measures to help protect and restore the environment. This cleanup is being monitored by environmental scientists with the Department of Fish and Wildlife that are specially trained for oil spill response. Cleanup methods being used in this response include high pressure, low volume washing. And with that, I'm going to shift gears and, and introduce, and it's my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Kathleen Jennings, who's a senior environmental scientist with the Department of Fish and Wildlife. Thank you. Hello, I'm Kathleen Jennings, and for this response, I am functioning as the Wildlife Branch Director. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so I am functioning as a Wildlife Branch Director for this response. Uh, wildlife tallies are done at the end of every day, um, so the numbers I will provide are from last night. We have, um, as of last night, a total of 49 collected birds primarily brown pelicans, and there are 33 live and 16 dead that make up that number 49. For marine mammals, we have collected a total of 27, 18 live, and 9 dead as of last night, and most of these are California sea lions. There are some questions about uh, dolphins that were captured, and um, we have uh, collected for, there were no visible signs of oiling for those four animals that are being investigated further. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Rick McMichael, Senior Director of Operations for Plains All-American Pipeline. I would like to summarize the progress we have made so far and the stage of work we are now entering. In each work zone, our immediate goal has been to remove the visible, visible oil as quickly as possible, taking into account safety, cultural, and environmental sensitivities. In the areas where we are nearing this goal, we have begun the next major step, which is a more deliberate survey of those areas to search for remaining oil. This is the normal course of action for all response and recovery activities. In fact, the Unified Command has already anticipated this step. It has developed plans working with NOAA and other relevant state and federal agencies on how to look for and address pipeline oil that may be underground or underwater. We will continue this pattern of clean and resurvey until together, as Unified Command, we deem cleanup work is no longer necessary. Now for a review of the work zones. On the water, as we discussed over the past couple of days, nearly all the visible sheen has been removed from the surface. Skimmers and booms continue to be deployed to capture any remaining sheen. We have been advised by experts with significant experience in Santa Barbara area that some of the oil sheen seen on the water is associated with natural seeps that have been occurring for hundreds of years. Our boats have continued to skim some of this oil as well. We have begun the next step of cleanup I, I just described and are actively resurveying the area, including searching for pipeline oil below the surface. We are using boats with sonar and diver teams knowledgeable with these waters to conduct this search. We are also working with NOAA and UC Santa Barbara to determine whether any oil found is from the release or from natural seeps in the area. UCSB divers searched an area east of Refugio State Park where they believe submerged oil was most likely to be found. They observed some oil in four areas near the seafloor. One had minimal oil. The, the other three, the divers observed pea-sized droplets of oil as well as aggregations of oil and seaweed, the largest of which was the size of a pillow. We don't know 
the amount of this oil at this time. But it's approximately 20 feet underwater and about 150 yards off the beach. As I mentioned, the Unified Command already has approved the plan in anticipation of this. The plan provides an approved set of methods to capture this oil. We will work with federal, state, and local agencies to choose the best of these predetermined methods to capture the oil after conducting initial analysis. We respect the sensitive biological nature of the kelp beds and regret this incident has affected them. On the beaches, workers continue to manually clean oil from the cliff face and large stationary rocks. We are also collecting oil seaweed and kelp from the shoreline. On the bluffs, the area west of, west of southbound 101, we are awaiting approval from the Unified Command to proceed. In the culvert area, the, uh, this is another area we have completed the initial cleanup. We are currently in the process of resurveying it to determine what additional work is necessary. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you again for being here. Uh, I'd like to continue with an update. At the release site, we are nearing completion of the excavation of the oiled soil around the affected pipeline. We are now collecting soil samples to determine whether further soil needs to be removed from the impacted area. The remainder of our efforts in this zone has been focused on removing the affected segment of pipe. To do so, we are executing the work plan approved by our federal regulators, the Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration, known as PHMSA, along with Unified Command. Yesterday, we completed the process of digging out the soil from around the pipeline and preparing the work site to make it safe for today's removal. To do so, we are executing the work plan approved by PHMSA and Unified Command. We will make cutouts in the pipeline on either side of the affected section. It will be wrapped to preserve the conditions of the pipe during transport. During this process, we will use protective measures to ensure we are able to capture any oily residue remaining in that section of the pipe. We are also removing the oiled soil from beneath the pipe once that section is removed. I know the community is interested in this cause, but we are not in the position to discuss what we saw, what the pipe looks like, or anything about the affected piece of pipe until after the investigation is completed. Finally, I want to remind the community about our claims line. For those who have any questions or would like to submit a claim, they can call 866-753-3619. We are actively addressing claims as they are received. There are some details to still be worked out, but we currently plan to have trained claim processors at bo the booth at Saturday's open house at the Elks Lodge. And again, and to the citizens of Central California here in Santa Barbara County, we truly regret the impact this unfortunate incident has had. And we will work diligently with the 350 employees of Plains that live here in California, with the over 5,000 employees of Plains are committed to doing the right thing. And with the resources that you heard earlier, it takes all of us to respond to this with safety of our responders, safety of the public, and, and, and minimize any further impact to the environment. Thank you. Okay, so now we'll take questions. Any questions? Javier? We, we've confirmed that this is the area of affected pipe that caused the release. Do you have a follow up? Uh, so, have you seen it? Have you seen the rubber section of pipe? Have you, I have not seen the pipe. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Any info on where it will be transported to, and how it will be transported, as well as the contaminated material, and how it will be transported? Uh, could you repeat the question, please?
So again, we are working with PHMSA under their direct supervision. We have uh, a third party independent uh, contractor who is working under their supervision and they will uh, investigate the uh, section of pipe and they will transfer it to their independent lab. And uh, at this time we cannot release the location of that for security reasons. Thank you. Have a question? You were not okay. Oh, you have a follow-up. Sorry. Contaminated materials that have also been collected. Any ideas as to where they'll be transported and how? So, as you can imagine, there's there's different varieties of liquids and and solids. But again, uh, the environmental unit within Unified Command will put a plan together based on the characteristics of the waste. And once that's determined, they'll make a determination of where that waste will go. I don't have the exact uh, size of that pipe, but again, uh, we're working under the supervision of uh, PHMSA. They do have a third-party independent uh, lab that's taking care of that section of pipe. I'm not sure if you were at the very first uh, telecom or press conference we had on uh, Wednesday, uh, but I started off the um, my remarks as this is kind of an unconventional spill, and I, I think I've kind of explained a couple times that um, we have three major areas of concern. Obviously, where the release inland up above Highway One, below the highway to the beach area, and on the water, and the Coast Guard uh, has jurisdiction on the water. In the coastal areas and um, as a result of the initial notification on Tuesday last Tuesday um, my I actually opened the uh, oil spill liability trust fund to basically mobilize the resources that we had access to to get to the scene and because I opened the fund first um, basically I, I'm the federal on-scene coordinator however I say however big time however because there's there's um, more to it than just the coastal and the waterway zone. There's the inland, uh, the inland zone that we have responsibility, that EPA has responsibilities for. And we did something a little bit unconventional for this spill. We have sat together in the same room, elbow to elbow, uh, hip to hip. I'm, I'm not kidding you. We're sitting next to each other all day long for about 18 hours a day. Uh, we, we don't make any decisions in a vacuum. So although I open the fund and technically I'm the federal on-scene coordinator for this event, we are working in a coordinated fashion with EPA. We're both with the federal government. We both have the same interest in cleaning up the oil, uh, protecting the environment, and helping this community get back to uh, where they were before the incident. Well, I just want to give EPA an opportunity also. She, she, she completes me. So. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I, I think Captain Williams said it all. A uh, follow-up question. Uh, since you two are, I guess, the, the lead for this, this effort here, uh, was at uh, uh, the beach today at uh, Haskell's Beach, and I was actually kicked off the open beach property, uh, saying that I needed to have an escort at an open beach as I'm trying to cover the volunteers cleaning up the beach. I guess, what's your response to that, and who's in charge of uh, what beaches are open and, and if media gets kicked off the property? I'm not aware that you got kicked off the beach. Uh, we don't want to hamper uh, the information that gets out there. However, we do have a joint information uh, center that helps um, locate media, embed media, uh, provide press availability, and so on. And that's something that if you would work through our joint information center, we'd be able to, to take care of you and make sure that you're not kicked off any beach. We, would, we want you to get the story that you need to see the good work that we're doing out there because we do have a lot of people out there responding. Over 600 people at the uh, release site and on the beach and on the water and then in our command post we have plenty of people up in there, hundreds of people, I'm not exaggerating, who are planning for the next day's operations. It's a, it's a huge event and we really want to get the story out that we're, we're taking this seriously, we're making progress, we've gained momentum and, and that we're working together as a community. Right, but is, is there somebody in charge of, I mean, if it's an open beach, there shouldn't need to be any. Right, we, we do have safety concerns, and we've stressed the safety concerns all along. 
uh, you know, if there's is, if there's hazardous materials on the beach or oil, we don't want you to get um, to interfere with that. We don't want you to be uh, tainted by that. There's also, and with fish and wildlife could probably speak much more elo eloquently than I, but all of the the uh, the habitats that are on the beach, we want to make sure that people aren't trampling over nesting areas or um, you know interacting with wildlife or the vegetation. We don't want to. We don't want to make the situation worse um, by having people go in areas that they shouldn't be. And our experts that we have on scene, they really know where people should and should not be. And it's it's just a matter of trying to be responsible for this community. And uh, I, I just encourage you call the Joint Information Center. Uh, our PIO, they can take care of you. We want to get. We want to help you guys get a, a good story, to get good pictures. Uh, but. It, you just need to kind of work through our system that we have, but we'll take care of you. Even on a public beach, what if I was just... So we're, we're going to go... I'll touch base with you afterwards, and we'll make sure that we can get the ham. Go ahead, yeah. Question uh, for the Plains folks, I think. Is there any plan to uh, help make up for any you know, potential loss in visitorship or tourism dollars? To uh, I know during the BP School, BP paid for an ad campaign to get people back is there any plan to, to assist the local business economy here after this is all done, you know, going into the future? We, we intend, we are the responsible party and we uh, intend to address all issues associated with this bill. We, we have a claim, a claim line that's open. We are actively addressing those claims and anyone who has a concern or a claim should, uh, should call that number and we'll, we'll pursue it. I will let EPA talk. Uh, I'll let EPA, uh, EPA talk about uh, this. However, uh, before she does, um, I want to stress to you that we're not issuing this order because the responsible party hasn't been cooperating. They have been cooperating. They've been very responsive to the unified command and our demands. However, it's basically a common practice to issue these things to document it so they have something that they can follow. And I'll let uh, EPA discuss. So the FIMSA order specifically relates to the pipeline itself and to the investigation regarding the pipeline and the pipeline operation. It is on the regulatory side of this pipeline and, and they are managing basically the investigation and all of the work with respect to the pipeline itself. This order is different from that in that it, it involves response. It is about the response efforts as a result of the pipeline spill. It addresses what happened after and what is going on now. It is to assess the inland areas, areas subsurface, as well as the coastal zone and the water and the marine environment. And it will cover the cleanup efforts until it's determined that Plains has done enough work to ensure that these all these areas are cleaned up appropriately. I think every day you should expect changes to uh, how the oil impacts the shoreline because of the wave action and the high tides and the low tides and so on. Uh, so that's the reason why we send out teams and do overflights every day to ascertain where those, those affected areas or impacted areas may be. Uh, I would like to explain that as our, our uh, incident command post has grown and we've, we've gotten more people in there tracking the, the correct data and so on. We're, we're collecting the data a little bit more efficiently and have a better tally of what is out there. And uh, I just assure you that we'll continue every day to con uh, conduct assessments uh, to determine if we have new impacted areas.
I, I, you know, to be perfectly honest, I'll have to get back to you on the geographic, the points, uh, but it's generally the same location, and you probably have seen scat teams on the, the beaches, but we'll get, we need to get back to you on that one. Okay. I'll get back to you from here. And then one last, we have time for one last question. Good afternoon, my name is Jordan Stout. I'm a scientific support coordinator with NOAA's Emergency Response Division. Um, and as you, many of you know, since early on in the spill, NOAA has participated in first light overflights to do overflights of the operational area to evaluate the location of offshore oil um, to help set, to help feed oil spill trajectory models, models and support some of the response decisions here. Uh, much of the oil we've seen, uh, we haven't, the, the areas that we've flown have not extended that far to the east, uh, if you. Uh, but we do know that the circulation patterns in the in the Santa Barbara Channel right now, there is a, a anti-clockwise, a, a counterclockwise gyre set up right now, so that the oil that's offshore of Santa Barbara is actually heading from east to west. Um, there's a website that I can provide to the Joint Information Center that will give you uh, sort of a, almost a real-time view of what the circulation pattern in is is in this area. So any oil that's substantially east of Santa Barbara uh, probably has not come from this area any time in the recent past. So it may have come from other areas. Um, I, I'm not aware of the reports you're talking about, but uh, it, it's hard to think that that is associated with oil that's been offshore Santa Barbara the last couple of days. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Um, if you have any other questions, please see me after this, and I'm happy to jot everything down and get it back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for coming out.